From Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy at 5620 Crawford Street here in Harahan, welcome to Catholic League Football. Hi again everyone, I'm Eric Ritchie. So glad to be joined by Jesuit head coach Mark Sanji, several of his players, assistant coaches, the family members of Blue Jay football players here with us tonight. First of all, coach, congratulations on a nice two and one start. Welcome to the program. So good to see you. I know you're used to holding these microphones, but now it's back to holding the clipboards and making calls. Well, it's a little bit of a different seat, but I'm, I'm really glad to be back. We're off to a two and one start. Would like to be three and zero, oh, but uh, we're, we're, we've kind of got something going on right now. We're very excited. Got some good players. It's, it's really good to be back. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll talk to Coach Sanji, talk to some of the Blue Jays that are behind us as well, talk about not only Blue Jay football, but obviously Catholic League football. We'll look at highlights from around the league as we uh, uh, hit week three and enter week four. And let's talk about, first of all, what it's been like. The whirlwind since we talked to you uh, just weeks before the season, named a head coach for a second time here with the Blue Jays. I know then you were just trying to catch up, catch your breath. What's it like now as you were kind of a third of the way into the regular season? Well, I'm still trying to catch my <laughs> breath. You know, I tell people I started about three months behind and uh, it really feels like I'm working on four months behind now. But uh, the kids have been great about it. Uh, it. It was a little bit overwhelming at first, but uh, I'm getting comfortable. I get comfortable, a little bit more comfortable each week. Uh, like I said, the kids have been great. The coaches have been, been great. Uh, I just feel like I'm supposed to go in there and really not screw it up and uh, really uh, just really make sure that, that things go as according to plan. Back-to-back -back wins uh, over St. Paul's on the road. Then you came home for your home opener this past weekend. You beat Central of Baton Rouge. And both of those wins, convincing wins, where not only did you get big plays offensively, Coach, but defense and special teams, couple team victories back-to-back -back now. Yeah, we, we played a, a complete game last week. I think we played a complete game against St. Paul's. We were expecting both of those teams to be, to be very good co uh, level of competition for us, and they were. Uh, that first week against Ponchatoula, we, we put our defense in, in a couple of bad positions there uh, throughout the football game, and, and, and we came out uh, you know, on the losing end of that. Scored a lot of points, still weren't able to keep ourselves out of trouble, but I think putting it all together against St. Paul's and then Central with Baton Rouge, who I think is about to explode. They're a very talented team. Uh, I was really pleased with our effort the last two weeks. I'm really pleased with the way we're preparing for things right now. and. and, and uh, just how we're practicing, how we're approaching the game. I think that's the key to the whole thing for us right now. Coach Sanji, of course, was the head coach from the Jesuit Blue Jays from 92 to 96. His alma mater, Brother Martin, from 97 to 01. A couple different stints as well as an assistant and offensive line coach for the Blue Jays. Took about a decade off, got into the world of sales, made some money as a pharmaceutical sales representative, and you always had that itch. You stayed with the game, broadcasting, doing Blue Jay games, radio, TV. What has been the biggest difference between coaching and 2014 as when you left, I guess, 2002? Well, I don't think there have been too many different I haven't seen many many differences let's put it that way I mean, the fundamentals stay the same offenses and defenses are a little bit different in fact I think they're more advanced now I think some of the things that people are doing on defense uh, are really uh, they're exciting to me uh, but I, the, the fundamentals haven't changed the kids haven't changed you know we get great effort over at Jesuit uh, uh, we get uh, you know really intelligent kids we get kids that have a long uh, span of concentration so we can really really uh, I guess challenge them a lot to to step up and, 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 and learn more football, I guess you could say is the best way to put it. But uh, I don't think too many things have changed. I really don't. Um, and, and again, I'm feeling more comfortable week, week by week. About to show your highlights of your week three victory over Central. What stands out about that game? And we just talked briefly about it, but uh, I know a complete 48 minutes, a, an overall solid performance on, on, on all phases of the game. But when you think about that win, what stands out the most? Well, we started the game the right way. You know, I felt like um, two weeks prior to that with, with Ponchatoula, we kind of waited for something to happen before we got going. Well, we, we made something happen this week. Mark Beebe stepped in front of a ball on the second play of the game and, and took it back and put our offense in great position. And from there, I, you know, I, of course, I never get comfortable until the game's over, but I felt like we were in control of the football game from that point on out. Our offense went in, did a great job. Uh, we connected on a lot of passes. Defensively, we were flying around, and we shut down a team that again, I think is, is ready to explode talent-wise. We're just getting started here on Catholic League football. We're going to go to the highlights now of Jesuits game with Central this past week. Don't go anywhere. Much more Blue Jays football, much more Catholic League football to come as we broadcast from the Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy. Here's the highlights from the Blue Jays' latest victory. 
After back-to-back -back road games to open the season, Jesuit back at Dad Gormley Stadium for their home opener, facing Central of Baton Rouge. And you think the Blue Jays were ready for some home cooking? Second play of the game, and it's Mark Beebe stepping in front of the pass for the INT. That sets up the short field for his offense to start the game. And they took advantage. Trey LaForge hits Kalijah Lipscomb, gets a great block from Charles Jackson, then dives into the end zone. It took a while, but eventually the call was made. That's a touchdown from 17 yards out, and Jesuit led 7-0. Defensively, what a night up front. Robert Lebrano and Hunter Robert stuffing the run on this play. It was that kind of physical play we saw all night. Robert even physical with the ball. Watch number 51 from a fullback position. Lower the boom on this play. It was that kind of a night physically all the way around for Jesuit. Second quarter, a little misdirection. Once again, it's LaForge finding Lipscomb, who's going to do the rest. Finding the end zone again. Jesuit has a 14-0 lead, and a theme is developing. Third quarter now, and it's the LaForge to Lipscomb connection hooking up again. A third touchdown pass from the combo, and they weren't through. Fourth quarter, guess who? LaForge throws four touchdown passes on the night, all four going to Lipscomb. And the Jays are in complete control. It certainly helps when your guys come off the bench and chew up both yards and clock. Sophomore Connor Pruet running hard. That's a 33-yard gain, great blocking up front as well, and Jesuit not missing a beat. Next, it's Kai Rosas running hard in the red zone, running with conviction. Then it's right back to Prue. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. Jesuit 2-1 and one now after the 35-6 win over Central. We made a number of big plays. Our offense played very well. Our defense played very well against a very talented football team. So I thought we were real physical tonight. I like to see that. Um, and I think we're prepare preparing real well. And, and it's starting to show in our play. I thought our defense had um, excellent preparation throughout the week. Uh, we definitely... Uh, came out and did what I thought we were capable of doing, uh, what we did last week, and hopefully what we can carry over to next week. I think we played an all-around good game, 35-6. to six. Our offense, uh, we operated at maximum potential, I feel like. Our defense played a heck of a game, and uh, we just came out ready to play. We practiced all week. We put in put in work, and um, they're, they're a nice team. There's no doubt about that. I, think, I just feel like we came out ready to play tonight. Joe Yenny Stadium Saturday night, the matchup everyone wanted to see. Acadiana, last year's 5A state champs facing Rummel, the defending Division I state champions. The best of select versus non-select. And no one saw a one-sided affair coming. First possession of the game, it's Raiders quarterback Chase Forcade on the keeper. 15 yards out, and that's a Rummel touchdown. Raiders led 6-0. What a night for Rummel's defense. The wrecking Rams put up 42 on the Raiders a year ago. Not on this night. Junior linebacker Corey Harris with the sack. Second quarter, 4K made it 13-3 with the touchdown run from point blank range and Rummel up by 10. Ensuing possession, Rams forced a punt and Brandon Phillips continues to make plays all over the field. That's a Phillips block punt, which sets up Rummel at the doorstep. Fittingly, it's Phillips with the honors, stretching over the plane and giving Rummel a 20 to three lead they would carry to the half. As if it wasn't already Rummel's night, a pair of plays showed their dominance. First on defense, sophomore defensive back Derek Munson reads the option, that's a tackle for loss. Quiet, please. A fake on the upcoming run will make a pair of Ram defenders run into themselves. On the keeper, it's 4K, the spin, and uh-oh, that kind of a night for the wrecking Rams. Fourth quarter, 4K now through the air. He finds David Hensley behind the defense and lays it right in. A 37-yard scoring strike, Rummel led 27-3 they would close out the scoring on another 4K touchdown pass. Damian Jean-Pierre with the honors and in convincing fashion, the two-time defending state champs make an emphatic statement. Rummel crushes Acadiana 34 to nine. Running off tackles, 48 plays, we're gonna do it against these guys tonight, you know, and um, we had a little successful play action last year and we picked up where we left off and 
That's got to be part of our game plan to keep people on their heels. Up front, our two uh, two tackles inside did a real good job. Um, and our defensive ends played uh, played real well with the dives. Linebackers played well. It was just a, a, an overall team effort. Everybody did their uh, covered their assignments, you know, dive, quarterback, pitch. They hurt us a little bit on some passes, but uh, other than that, I mean, you really can't play too much better against this kind of team. So I'm real, real proud of the kids. It's assignment football. You go against the V, you got to, everybody got their own assignments. One mistake and they can score, and we were, we were on top of it. We did our assignments on defense. Oh, yeah, Katie has a great football team, a uh, great football program. They won state last year. Both of us won state, so we were just trying to see who the true state champions were, and uh, I think that the result stood that we were the true state champions on 5A. Realty executives, where the experts are. The best agents are the most professional and knowledgeable. The best agents are executives. Realty executives, serving New Orleans and all surrounding communities. Now with offices in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, Herrero, and Desterham. Realty executives, where the experts are. The Buckwalder Insurance Group has been servicing clients for over 20 years. Our Kenner office just off Williams on 20th Street is here to handle all of your personal and business needs, whether it's auto, home, life, commercial, or business insurance. The Buckwalder Insurance Group is here to help you prepare a strategy to achieve your financial goals. Also with offices in Booty and Destrahan. Stop by or call to get a quote today. I like the personality of this team. Let's keep, let's just keep gaining on that. Got it? Jardina, where are you? Had a good morning. Break us off, buddy. Let's go. Punt, punt, punt. Welcome back to Catholic League Football. Eric Ritchie, pleased to be joined by Jesuit head coach Mark Sanji. And I know something, when you took the job, you told us coaching in the Catholic League is the best position in the world. Why do you say that? Why do you think coaching in this league is above all else? The, the coaching is great. The competition that you see on a week-to-week -week basis, the quality of coaching is fantastic. The athletes, uh, the hustle, the pageantry about it uh, on Friday nights, there's nothing like it. It's terrific. Uh, these games that we've played, you know, up to this point, we'll play a couple more weeks uh, while they're exciting. It's nothing like a Friday night in the Catholic League. Just You're just going to see real quality coaching across from you. Kids are going to do things right. They're not going to make many mistakes. They're going to be athletes all over the place. Uh, so, you know, it just really kicks it up to another level. It really does. We had Jay Roth of Rummel, of course, last week in this very spot, and I was asking him the Catholic League question like there's obviously been a little shakeup at two of your competitors. There's Mark Sanji is back, Eric Roboto now the head coach at Holy Cross. He sat there and smiled the whole time and had glowing remarks about his memories of, of coaching with you and with Coach Roboto through the sure, years. Sure, sure. Jay and I worked together at Shaw for a year um, when we were in our formative years of coaching, really basic stuff, and uh, got together and became really good friends then. And I asked him to come over to Jesuit and work for me for a couple of years. And, uh, we did some great things there, had some great teams. He did an awesome job, as, as, as we all know. And then uh, goes over to Rummel, so it's going to be nice to compete with him again. Eric Roboto, I've competed with him in the past. I know the quality of the defenses that he's put on the field. There's so many guys in this league that I know real well. And, you know, and Jay used to call this an inbred league, really. You know, all the coaches kind of came from one or two of the same staffs and worked together at one time or another. And that, that's what makes it special, too. Uh, Scott Bain's father over at Holy Cross. Mark Bonice is a, a guy that uh, I, I had the privilege of coaching at, uh, at, at Jesuit. Um, he's the head coach at Brother Martin. Uh, so, you know, it's going to be week in and week out. It's, it's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. We're about to meet some of your coaches, some of your players. But when you came here, I know it was real important to keep some, some consistency. And you, and, and you had some quality assistance, and you kept them. Yeah, yeah. I was really fortunate to be able to do that. The coaching that gets done on a daily basis, I get to witness. I don't coach a position specifically. So I'm moving around, watching, helping out from, from spot to spot. We've got uh, a lot of guys that are coaching every play, and it's a very high level of coaching. I thought it was real important to keep those guys intact. And I felt like it was really important for me to adapt to what they were doing and to 96 other kids and to have them to come in right in and adapt to me. Uh, it's the old, the old thing about, uh, you know, if it's not broken, don't break it. And if it's not broken, don't fix it. Well, I, I don't think we needed to go in and break or fix anything. Wade Kaiser did a fine job with the program leading up to this point, put it right up into my hands, and I've just got to make sure it stays on the right course. 
Time for us to check out some other action from around the Catholic League. Four of the six teams were on the road, and let's just say week three was very good for the Catholic League. We're back here with more of Jesuit football after this. Time now for our week three candidates for the Buckwaller Insurance Player of the Week. St. Aug wide receiver Stanley Morgan. A huge game, nine catches, 181 yards, and a touchdown as the Purple Knights beat Covington 34 to 27. Shaw running back Trey Regis, 171 yards rushing and three touchdowns as Shaw dismantled South Lafouche 56-15. Last week's reigning player of the week, Kalijah Lipscomb. He caught four touchdown passes in Jesuits' 35-6 win over Central. Blue Jays quarterback Trey LaForge, he threw those four touchdown passes, completing 16 of his 22 attempts for 155 yards. And Rummel quarterback Chase Forcade accounted for four of the Raiders' five touchdowns against the defending 5A state champs. Forcade throws for over 200 yards, rushes for close to 50. Our Buckwaller Insurance Player of the <clears throat> our Buckwalder Insurance Catholic League Player of the Week after this. The Buckwalder Insurance Group has been servicing clients for over 20 years. Our Kenner office just off Williams on 20th Street is here to handle all of your personal and business needs, whether it's auto, home, life, commercial, or business insurance. The Buckwalder Insurance Group is here to help you prepare a strategy to achieve your financial goals. Also with offices in Booty and Destrahan. Stop by or call to get a quote today. I'm Chase Forcade and I'm Buckwalter Insurance Player of the Week. Offense executed plays, uh, offensive line protected for me, the receivers caught passes, and uh, when coach called the play, we just executed and, and uh, got, the job, got the job done. Well, this was definitely his best game of the three against Acadiana. Chase is kind of a big, big game player, but he knew this is one that was airby in the area he was looking at, and he, uh, he performed well Saturday night. But Chase executed. Chase took what the Acadiana defense gave him. Um, he threw for two touchdowns. He ran for two. He took care of the football. He made good decisions, and he was a leader on the field. Good week by week, building up on teammates, building up on brotherhood. Uh, everybody's starting to get along with each other, starting to communicate. You know, uh, that's, that's, that's what's big about this Roman football team. We're, we're starting to become as a team, uh, got a chip on our shoulder, and we're just coming every week and playing like a team, and big game every week. Hi, at Tachi Insurance, we can do it all, not just life, health, and employee benefits, but now we've expanded our product portfolio to include all commercial lines of insurance. At Tachi Insurance, we can truly be your one-stop shop for all your insurance needs. At Tachi Insurance, you get personalized service from Natalie, and Kelsey Tachi. Jesuit band and the Jets bring us back from break. Eric Ritchie, Jesuit head coach Mark Sanji, and as promised, Coach Sanji brought some guests. We're going to let you do the honors and introduce who we got. Great. Thank you, Eric. Uh, brought one of my linebackers with me, Jonathan Jardina, a defensive tackle, Hunt Robert, a tight end, Foster Morrow, one of our chain guys and Johnny's parent, uh, Charles Jardina, and one of our assistant coaches, Benny Baptiste. Awesome. Coach Baptiste, let's start with you. What has this year been like for you? And I know it's been a change right off the bat, but you guys don't seem like you've missed a beat. We haven't. Uh, we've been extremely fortunate and blessed to have Mark Sanji as a head coach. From the standpoint, it just, you know, he's been a part of the Jesuit community. Uh, he's been great with the coaching staff. He, he's a great friend. I've been knowing him for over 20 years. And uh, it's just a great situation so that we look forward to him and this program just to continue to strive. Coach wears a number of different hats, the defensive line, special teams, coaches the, uh, the scout team as well. 
what would you like to say on behalf of your position groups? What what do you want to give love to, I guess? Uh, open mic here. There you go. Well, thank you. Uh, we have a guy right now by the name of Hunter Robert over there who's, uh, besides being a team captain, he's been a real leader, and uh, he's just been a great teammate and, honestly, a friend to everybody in the program. So uh, besides that, we have some great guys, Foster Morrow and, and Jonathan uh, right here. I call him Geraldine, but his nickname to me is G, and they're just fantastic guys, and I'm fortunate to work with him. They had great games, Coach. We appreciate your time. Thank you. We're just going to keep working down the working in the room, so to speak. As a dad, as a member of this Jesuit program and family, what's it like to have so much success and to see all the work that these guys do? It's uh, it's, it's intense, but very rewarding. These boys work very hard, extremely hard, not only on the field but off the field, and it's it's impressive impressive to watch them every Friday night. It really is. And uh, the boys have done a great job. Coach has done a great job stepping in. The staff is wonderful. Father's great. Uh, everybody is just super terrific. And it's great to be a part of it, you know, to be a, a father. You know, down through the years I heard that, you know, they've done this for uh, since Jesuit's inception of the football team that they let a parent uh, work the chains, and I'm happy to be able to do that. Well, uh, thank them. well, very well deserved. You're a proud papa, and for good reason. Thank you very thank much. You. Let's go to our big tight end here in Foster. What's it been like this season? Two and one, you're off to a nice start. It seems like you and Trey still are kind of have that rhythm going, and uh, once again, picking up big yards, Kalijah scoring touchdowns every time we look over the corner. What's this year been like? Uh, this year's been pretty fantastic, but also kind of roller coaster, you know? Um, Going to the summer, we're getting weight training done, and uh, we realized that we're going to have a new head coach, and we just we didn't skip a beat, and we've just been going. And week one was kind of a disappointment with all the uh, mess ups that we had. We still had a chance to win it in the end, but um, I think we've been playing some of our best football. Awesome. It's a pleasure to watch you. Good luck to you the rest of the season, my man. Keep Thank it up. You. All right, as we work on, you've heard the props already. Hunter, tell me a little bit about what it's like to be just in the trenches and, and being a run stopper and, and what we saw last week against Central, you guys up front, I mean, you, you did some damage. Yeah, I, I love being down and dirty. I love being in the line. Uh, you know, I'm a big guy. I love going up against other big guys too, more manly, you know, and uh, I just love it. What do you want people to know about Jesuit football? That we work hard, we never quit. Even when our back's up against the wall, we don't stop. We keep on going. Continued success, young man. Let's go to your defensive lineman teammate. And, Johnny, again, I think our guys interviewed you after the game this past win. And, you know, you were just talking about the teamwork that you were able to put, accomplish and uh, what you guys were able to do on the defensive side of the ball. I think a, a lot of that goes to our preparation during the week. Every day, in and out, we coaches watch some film, think, all the things that uh, – give us tips and everything that we worked on during the week. We have a few things that we uh, instituted during practice and it really helps us in the games and game speed and things like that. I know one of the things Coach Sanji really emphasized when he came back to Jesuit was the traditions and the education and the support that he receives uh, from Jesuit. One of those traditions, we just talked to your dad, having him as a part of this, part of this team, literally as a member of the chain gang, what is that like for you as a player? Um, it makes everything real close. I like having my dad on the sidelines. Um, it's, it's just really close and it makes everything a family and um, wouldn't want it any other way. That's awesome. Well, enjoy every second of it. When you're my age, you'll look back and those are some of the best t times of your life. Good, good job. All right, Coach Sanji, come on in here. Well represented tonight and uh, a lot of reason to be proud right now for Jesuit football. Yeah, I couldn't ask for better kids. I mean, they give us everything we need on a daily basis. You know, we ask for a little bit more each day and, and it really goes well. Uh, we, we've got a great senior class. I've never had a good football team that didn't have a great senior class. I've certainly got one right now. They're a great bunch of kids to coach. Uh, they don't complain much about anything. They really just come out there and we, I think we work a little harder every day. We prepare at a nice speed and a nice tempo and uh, you know, I think that's why we're getting better at, at what we're doing. He was weeks away from holding this very microphone for the Cox 4 game of the week in New Orleans, but he just seems a lot more happier. Mark Sanji, we appreciate your time. Best of luck, my friend. Thanks Best for everything of luck. you're doing for us. We really appreciate it with Catholic League. You got it. Certainly well deserved. We have one more segment to go on Catholic League football. We're going to talk to some of the good folks here at Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy, find out more about their place, and we'll end with a little special Jesuit something too. So don't go anywhere. We're almost ready to wrap this one up. Realty executives, where the experts are. The best agents are the most professional and knowledgeable. 
the best agents are executives. Realty Executives, serving New Orleans and all surrounding communities. Now with offices in Metairie, New Orleans, Mandeville, Herrero, and Desterham. Realty Executives, where the experts are. The Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy offering two full state-of-the-art turf playing fields, 16 batting cages, and three clay baseball pitching mounds. It's a football show at the Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy. Eric Ritchie alongside Blake Benedetto, the Director of Operations here at LBSA. Blake, what do you have going on here for us today? All right, so what you're looking at is uh, it's a new machine called the Hit Track. It's a pitching and batting simulator. It allows fielders, position players, and pitchers to take live batting practice, or pitching for that matter, and it tracks every statistic, as you can see here, plate appearances, hits, average hits, doubles, triples, slugging percentage, you name it. It tracks in the pitcher's velocity incoming, the batter's exit speed, the max distance. Over here you can see a spray chart. The boys behind me here are hitting the Yankee Stadium. What it's based off of is this little machine over here to the right. It's got three infrared cameras that, that tracks velocity, exit speed, and trajectory. And it takes a logarithm from that and does uh, the trajectory with their, with their based off of the skill level. So we can pick major leagues, youth, college, or high school, and it'll adjust the fence and the skill level of position players accordingly. See, as you can see here, Brandon Mishu behind me, freshman at John Curtis, is hitting, and they'll tell you right there, he just hit a, uh, a ball, a triple to, to left center field. So it's, it's very realistic. You can play games on it. You can take regular batting practice, home run derby, live five-on-five -five games, teams that come in here. So there's, there's numerous things. We also use it for training, for lesson base as well. Blake, it's excellent, and I wish you had Cincinnati's Synergy Field. I'd get up there and start the Great American Ballpark, I should say. How old am I? I, I, I almost said Riverfront Stadium. Hey, listen, thanks so much for being a part of the show again, and again, tell everyone where we're at. We're at Louisiana Baseball and Softball Academy at 5620 Crawford Street in Harahan. It's a football show at a baseball facility. That'll do it for now. I'm Eric Ritchie for the Catholic League Show, and let's end like we always do with the photo finish, and it's Pierre Degree from Jesuit giving us the pictures this week. Good night, everyone.